Greetings, this is Ann Windsor, and I wanted to share with you today a testimony, a remarkable testimony of divine healing. This is the account of Mrs. Lucy Parker. She is one of the first um, healings that John Alexander Dowie had when he launched upon the healing ministry in Australia. This account is given after he was in Chicago and began publishing The Leaves of Healing. This is dated Chicago, September 7, 1894. God's Witness to Divine Healing Mrs. Parker was healed of cancer in the eye and the uterus. <clears throat> we have thought it well that the next of God's witnesses to divine healing should be that of a sister whose remarkable healing of cancer in the eye and uterus is one of the historic cases in our Australasian ministry. In a letter to the International Conference on Divine Healing and True Holiness, held in Agricultural Hall, London, June 1st to 5th, 1885, we communicated the facts in this case. The letter was widely published in Europe and America, and the following words describe this case. Mrs. Parker, Cancer in Left Eye, Blindness, and Internal Cancer. This lady lives at 340 Napier Street, Fitzroy. In July 1883, she came to see me, accompanied by her mother, Mrs. Powell, Sr., of St. George's Road, North Fitzroy, and my dear wife. For two years and nine months, she had been under the care of some of the ablest surgeons in Melbourne, of whom she specially named Dr. George Teague and Drs. Ray, Sr. and Jr. The cancer in the eye had totally destroyed the sight, and for many months the left eye was totally blind. No hopes of recovery were held out. Operation in the eye was both impossible and useless, and in her then condition the operation would have been fatal and Dr. Ray said to her husband that she must die when her child was born, if not before. The agony she suffered was extreme, and being comparatively young, with a large family and a delicate husband, she had a natural desire to live. Moreover, being an active Christian worker, she desired to be useful in God's service here. She was then, and is fully con a fully consecrated believer, enjoying the blessing of holiness of spirit, and desiring purity also of body. Hearing of the case of Mrs. Coates, already referred to, she came expecting immediate healing. After prayer, I laid hands upon her left eye in the right corner of which there was a large swelling with a small opening, through which an offensive, cancerous discharge was always oozing, the principal tumor being an insisted one behind the eye, extending towards the brain. Then happened, in a few minutes, a miracle of healing. The cancer burst and poured out at the small opening in a stream of cancerous matter, quickly filling two large pocket handkerchiefs. Then the swelling disappeared, the opening closed, and after anointing the eye, I asked her, did she expect to see clearly when she opened her eye? She said, yes. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I then bade her open her left eye while I covered her right with a handkerchief. She did so, 
and could see perfectly, looking at once out at the window into the bright sunlight and reading a small type Bible and even its marginal references. The restoration of sight was immediate, perfect, and remains until this day. On the anniversary of her healing, she quilted with that one eye, bandaging up the other. The outline of a sprig of leaves in black thread on a piece of black linen and wadding by a kerosene lamp at night on her sewing machine with which she earns her living as a tailoress. The internal cancer disappeared from that day and a few months later she became the happy mother of a healthy child. This lady has frequently testified in public, and her case has been published far and wide in many newspapers, and never once challenged. This lady testified shortly before we left Melbourne on the Lord's Day, December 4, 1887, four years and a half after her healing as is narrated in the record of our annual commemoration, page 12. And the photograph above, engraved, was handed to us by her when she, with her little boy, who was not to have been born, and all her other children and husband, hovered around us with a great company of our friends, as a vessel was about to leave the port of Melbourne. We frequently hear concerning her, and always that she remains to this day in perfect health. And among our treasures we still number the little pieces of black cloth which she quilted on the night of the day on which her sight was restored. This case attracted very wide attention in Europe nine years ago, and remains still one of the most perfect cancer healings on record. Mrs. Parker's testimony, which was given in the Free Christian Tabernacle, Melbourne, December 4, 1887. Mrs. Parker, 340 Napier Street, Fitzroy, said, My friends, I was suffering with a running cancer in my eye for some time and had become quite blind in it. No one but God and myself knows what I suffered. My mother was anxious that I should come to see Mr. Dowie, as she had heard of his laying hands on someone who received healing of cancer through faith in Jesus. Mother persuaded me to come, and she came with me. Mr. Dowie said, You don't expect me to heal you? I said, No. Mr. Dowie said, do you, be, do you believe the Lord Jesus will heal you? I replied that I did. I did believe that Jesus could heal me, because I knew that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and that if he healed other people, he would heal me. Mr. Dowie asked me if I could see with my eye, the left eye, and I said that I could not. But when I got home, I said to my mother, I can see you now. Imagine my feelings when I found that sight was restored. I, who have so many little ones depending upon me. Mr. Dowie laid his hands upon me, and I received my sight instantaneously. And from that moment, an internal cancer, which threatened my life, ceased to pain me. I never felt it again. Thank the Lord for it. Today, he is my healer, my all. This was on the 28th of July, 1883. I had been two years and nine months under the care of doctors. There was a running cancer in my eye, and the doctors talked of an operation. Now I can see perfectly. Here Mrs. Parker read an extract from a book printed in small type, the right eye at the time being covered. And I could see as well as this 
the moment I opened my eyes, after Mr. Dowie ceased praying with me, she said. Her mother, Mrs. Powell, of St. George's Road, Mrs. Davies of Ray Street, North Fitzroy, and Mrs. Dowie, who were present when she was healed, added their endorsement of Mrs. Parker's testimony. Mrs. Parker's husband corroborated the statement made by his wife. Mr. Dowie then asked Mrs. Parker several questions concerning the details of her healing, to which she gave clear and satisfactory answers. And finally he asked her, Have you read the account which I wrote of your case to the International Healing Conference held in the Agricultural Hall, London, from June 1st to the 5th, 1885, which was also published in my tract of last week entitled Things God Wrought by My Ministry? Mrs. Parker replied, Yes, I have. Mr. Dowie said, Will you kindly tell this audience if that is a fair and true statement? Mrs. Parker answered, Yes, it is. This account of the case is therefore added here as being in some respects fuller than the above and for other sufficient reasons. So that is a wonderful, remarkable healing testimony. It's one of the first miracles, serious miracles, that Dr. Dowie experienced while he was still in Australia after the stopping of the plague of the members of his congregation and his reputation for praying for people and God healing them began to get around and this woman came to him for her healing. Jesus is, as she said, the same yesterday, today, and forever. And you know, I want to encourage you as I was reading her words over here. Dr. Dowie said, You don't expect me to heal you? I said, No. Mr. Dowie said, Do you believe the Lord Jesus will heal you? I replied that I did. I did believe that Jesus could heal me, because I knew that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and that if he healed other people, he would heal me. Now, where did she get that knowledge? It doesn't say that she was a churched person, necessarily, and this was at the very beginning of healing being restored to the church in our times. So she just had to have seen Jesus in the Bible, read the verse that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, and she just included herself in the number. There wasn't all the teaching that miracles are done away with or that they are they ceased after the scriptures were completed or the last apostle died or the church was established. She didn't struggle with it. It's like she just slipped right into it. I believe Jesus is the same, and I believe he will heal me. And you know, we need to be just that simple. We need to believe that Jesus is the same today as he was yesterday, and that he will heal us. Very, very simply. Let's pray. Father, I pray for those that listen to this little short testimony. Father, if they're struggling, believing whether Jesus will heal them, Father, I pray that they will find encouragement just from this woman's testimony, a woman that lived over a hundred years ago. She came simply. She came in simple faith, believing that Jesus was the same. Today, the day, her day, in 1885 or 83, 87, whatever it was, that he was the same then as when he walked the shores of Galilee and healed the blind and the lame. Father, I thank you that she was just had simple childlike faith and believed that Jesus would heal even her. And Father, I pray for those that may be struggling, Father, with if it be your will to heal them, that they will receive the testimony of this woman, even though she's lived many years ago. And they will find themselves coming in that same simple faith. 
and receiving their miracle, their healing, their deliverance. And Father, even if they don't know you and they happen to just stumble across this little testimony, this short testimony, that, Father, they will recognize that you sent Jesus into the world to be the Savior, the Savior from our sins, that he died, that he rose again, that he ascended into heaven, and that right now he is sitting at your right hand, and that he will come again to judge the living and the dead. But they don't need to face that judgment, because right now they can bow their knee and say, Lord, I am a sinner, and I believe that you died and paid the price for my sins, and I receive what you did for me. Thank you for paying my sin debt, Lord Jesus. Receive me as one of your sheep. Make me one of your children. And I thank you for it. And I receive my sins forgiven. I receive my name written in heaven. I receive your spirit and life to dwell in me. In your name I pray, Lord Jesus. Amen. Well, there's a little slide at the end with some information for various couple sites that I have about healing and also my email address if you'd like to contact me. God bless you today.